Oh my God, <laughs> it's that time again. It's Comet time, how are Hello. you? Hello. Jonathan McHugh. Tamara My co-host. And we are hosting a show called The Weekly Comet. Yes, we are. Here on the Stream TV. Thank you for joining us. We have Brittany in the chat room. Say, what's up, hey, Brittany? Hey, Brittany. Hey, guys. I want you guys loud and clear to be talking to my girl, Brittany. Bother her all night long, and she will bother us and make sure we hear your questions. We have a lot coming up in the next hour. We have news about Weezer, Jay-Z, Kanye. Jay-Z and Kanye together. That's right. Little Maybe a little bit of Beyonce in there. Yeah, of course. Jack White. There's news. There's a lot of news. The Black Comet. Eyed and if you real, from want the your news daily, that's where you go, thecomet.com. Right. We got a really big shoe, as Ed Sullivan used to say. I don't know if anybody knows who Ed Sullivan was. No. But he was kind of the master of early TV when there was black and white only TV. You remember those days? I, I do, actually, but I, I try not to talk about it. No, it's a long time ago. Um, but you know what we got? We got a great show with a great guest. We got a ki young kid, young whippersnapper named Jonathan Zalbin, straight out of Juilliard, become one of the hottest composers in the uh, film industry today. But people like live music. Yes, and we they do. promise the people. We like live music. We love it. We love that's it. why we've so been we in the business for years. We like the live music. So we found a band. I found a band. Um, a friend's nephew came out to LA, put together a band, and they are on the borderline of awesome. I think they're pretty awesome, actually. You like them? I, I wouldn't even say borderline. I think that they're hitting awesome. Cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to kick it right to them.
find the name Mind the Gap. Uh, we're sitting on the train, and it's Alex and I, empty train, and it stops at some random stop. And we look across, and through the window comes this billboard, and it said Mind the Gap with a, with this figure falling through the crack. And I looked at the fi- and I looked at it, and I'm like, wow. Metaphorically, this is like everything that's going on in my life, in my head, and in, in, in our you know musical collaboration. Like everything is just kind of so close but so far, and being mindful of the space between here and there. And now for the news. This is the weekly news from thecomet.com. You know, I'm sure a lot of Weezer fans out there. What better thing to do with Weezer than to get on a boat with them? Yes, really? a Weezer, boat Weezer ride? is doing their very own cruise on Carnival. They're going to be sailing to Cozumel off the Gulf Sh- of Mexico in January 2011. So you want to hang with Weezer? And Dinosaur Jr. is going to be on that cruise too. Really? There's like a ton kinda, of bands on this cruise. Strange. So there, there's the Booze Cruise, there's the Blues Cruise. There's the John there's, Mayer Cruise. And now there's the Weeze Cruise. And now there's the Weeze Cruise. So. Jump on the Weeze Cruise, everybody. So just so y'all should know that. Flipping the script a little bit, we're talking hip-hop. Two of the icons in the hip-hop game, Jay-Z and Kanye West, have revealed that they are going to drop their own record together called Watch the Throne. And Watch the Throne is going to be out, actually, before you know it. It's, it's super top secret, but it's coming really quick. Uh, a couple of special guests on the record include uh, Def Jam's own Frank Ocean, who's part of the Odd Future Collective, and Mrs. Jay-Z herself, with the number one album in the country, according to SoundScan, two weeks in a row, the queen of uh, R&B music, Beyonce, is on the record. It's going to be hot. It's going to be very hot. Everyone's been waiting for this record. And they actually say that if you pre-order it, you should get it around August 2nd, but they haven't announced a release date, so it's still kind of hazy. It's basically going to be August 2nd. Basically going to be August But I didn't say that. Okay. It's not official. But, but you know, you in the Comet here, we get things early. But if you want uh, the track listing and everything, go to the Comet.com. They got it? Yeah, I got Freaking it. Freaking Comet.com. Hello. It's unbelievable. Uh, also, what else you got? Jack White, uh, Mr. White Stripes, is getting into hip hop. Um, his Detroit friend, a hip-hop artist named Black Milk, is going to record his first album for Third Man Records. Uh, seven-inch double-sided single is out, Brain and Royal Mega. You can listen to Brain on thecomet.com. Now, here's a question. Is Black Milk redundant with chocolate milk, or is that separate? There's two different people. Uh, two different people. Okay, good. Yeah, um, a whole different vibe. You guys might have heard this band, the Black Eyed Peas. There's, they've, been, no. they've done Are a little they? business... And they've been touring around the country and around the world for a long time. Um, they're deciding that they're, once their tour wraps today, um, is it today July 14th? Yes, today wow. is July 14th. So their tour is wrapping today, and despite speculation that they're going to end the Black Eyed Peas, no, they're just going to take a little break. Hiatus. Yeah, because uh, I think a girl, what's her name from the Black Eyed Peas? Fergie. Fergie's got a record coming out, so watch out for a solo Fergie record. And uh, Will's gonna Will's doing some work with Intel, right? He works with your friend, the Futurist of yes, Intel. Yes, yes, Will. He William has a uh, sits with the Futurist of Intel, and they like they spitball. They stare at each other. I think that's what the and Futurist they, said. He's like, we just sit there and stare at each other. I'm like, that's weird. Yeah. So Will is uh, he's doing so, all sorts of stuff. He's a busy man. Um, Brittany, what do our people say to you? Uh, they had <laughs> they're actually making a drinking game out of the two of you right now. Wow. Oh, so I want to know about time, this. What is it? Every time you say internets or internet or anything like that, they're taking a drink. So make sure you say it a lot. Wow. Ooh, wow. <laughs> but then, well, hold on, here's a question for you. Then we're responsible for people getting drunk. And what if they get in their car? Can they come back no, and sue us is the question. In their car. They stay on the, they're watching they stay on the internet? Stream. Oh, you see how I did that? You see how I did that? Yeah, I'll do that once in a while. Uh, if that's what you want, Brittany, I got you. OK. <laughs> OK, we're in. We're in on the game. All right. So I think, I don't know. I think uh, I'm in the mood for maybe some more music. Watch the leaves fall off the trees Burns my heart inside of me Leaning on the window pane Sky is turning blue to gray Oh, oh, oh It's getting colder The wind is strong, the sun is gone Harder and harder to hold on Can we make
days are short, the nights are long The colors of the rainbow all but gone The birds of life flying away No kids will come outside the play Quickly growing thin And nothing ever, ever stays the same Can we be it? Can we save it? I feel the back together want to know. Um, they think the sound would be a little bit more complete if you guys had a drummer. Have you guys ever thought about having a drummer or adding that in? Or uh, Rue uh, and, and Ozzy put together uh, most of the production. They're our producers. So um, Rue is putting together tons of loops and that kind of gives us that hip-hop edge unless we have, you know, Questlove, you know, coming in and, and doing some stuff with us. Right now I think we're going to keep it exactly how it is. This young fellow right here is named Jonathan Zalbin, and he is a film composer, uh, and he is a multi-instrumentalist. He plays violin and many other instruments, and he just came off composing a big HBO film, which we'll, um, which we'll, we'll talk about now. But um, I think what we'll do first is start with um, a clip of uh, one of the movies that we worked on together called Son of Morning. Now that you have the spotlight, the attention of the people, what is the message that you'd like to get across? What is it that you'd like to say to the world? Jonathan Zalbin, composer of the film Son of Morning and uh, many other films. Um, welcome. Thank welcome you. to the Weekly Comet. Thanks for having me. So, tell us about how you got started in the, in the business. How did you start scoring films? Well, um, I started working in commercials, uh, doing music for commercials, and then got some documentaries out of that, and then started scoring some narratives. And one of the first films I did was with you right. on Snoop Dogg's Hood of Horror. Oh, that's a oh, classic. Oh, I love yeah. that. That's <laughs> awesome but actually, uh, the story about how we met is a great one, because um, <clears throat> I met through fa family friends, and they, he kept calling me and saying, you know, I'm a composer, I'm a composer. And I said, send me a reel, send me a reel, send me a reel. Finally, sent it to me. I finally listened to it and then forgot about him. And then he called me <laughs> and said, hey, I have a film at Slamdance, which is the cousin of Sundance. Um, and so I was at Sundance, and I came over and watched this film, and I was like, wow, this kid actually has got game. And then we started doing a couple films together, and, and now he just did, uh, did some pieces on Morgan Spurlock's film, um, That Son of Morning you saw. But the biggest thing, talk about the new film coming out on HBO. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm really excited about this. It's, uh, it's a documentary that 
Liz Garbus directed and Julie Gaither produced and Mickey Milmore was an editor and I had worked with her and you on Double Time and she recommended me for the project and it was another documentary. Um, and it was an amazing project to work on just because of the subject matter and the story. Yeah, and about the story. I mean, this is about the woman who was drunk with her children and started well, driving down <clears throat> the wrong side of the, the freeway. Yeah, so, so what happened was she was driving on the Taconic Parkway in upstate oh New York and she she got on the ramp in the wrong direction. She hit an oncoming car and everyone died except her five-year-old son, Brian. Oh. And so it's a really tragic story. Um, and the documentary investigates what happened leading up to the crash. You know, what was actually going on? Why did she do this, right. essentially? Um, and it's not really clear. Um, and so the documentary explores all of those, you know, all the different stories that, that happens. Um, so musically, what was your path that you, you and Liz worked on for it and how, how did it complement your personality? Well, I mean, it was right in my comfort zone. It was a lot of music that was really personal and, you know, very uh, heartfelt to me. I, I scored it for uh, piano and violin and guitar and cello and got some really great players, this guy Jeff Burleson and Gilberta Gellage in, in New York, and they, they played on the score, and I played violin as well. and. Um, it was really exciting working with them and, you know, with all the people, you know, involved in the project. Wow. It, yeah, it was, uh, so I spent, um, I think it was about a month or two, you know, just locked in my room writing, <laughs> getting the music together. So it was pretty intense, you know, because of the subject matter as well. And, uh, uh, it's a pretty lonely profession, isn't it? I mean, in a way, when you're writing, yeah. you're scoring your own stuff? Yeah, it's very, it's very solitary, but I try to get out of the house and meet friends for lunch and, <laughs> Play with other musicians, you know, and right, you do recordings. Up. And I, I play violin on, you know, sessions, and I do live performances as well. So I'm seeing people during the week. But as far <laughs> as the actual composing, the day to day of that, there's, you know, I'm not working with right. too many other people. And going to Juilliard, which is obviously a high high end music academy, how did that prepare you for something like this? I mean, that, that was pretty intense. So I went there uh, for pre college, which was middle school and high school. So I spent six years there. Wow studying violin for two years and then um, and then I started doing composition when I was 14 and so for the you know four years of high school I was doing composition and violin and it was a really really intense education and I credit uh, you know my teachers there for you know showing me how it's done Wow and it was a great experience I wouldn't trade it for anything um, and then after that I went to, to Yale for undergrad and it was a completely different experience it was it was an intense environment, but much more relaxed in terms of the, uh, you know, like day-to-day -day kind of rigor. Mm -hmm. um, and then after that, I went to NYU for grad school and learned more wow. about the film scoring. It's a lot process. of education. Yeah, you were a lot of so education, as I said. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've I've been playing violin for 20 years now, I guess, wow. and I've been composing for about 15 years or more. Yeah, something like that. So. And so you've also been working on the discipline of music supervision and composing, and you have your own licensing site. So. Talk about how they kind of interrelate, you know, sometimes when you're doing one or the other on a job right. and does it get kind of schizophrenic sometimes when you're doing one and not the other? I mean, it, I try to separate it out in my head. To me, it's all, you know, music and it's music for picture and whatever is best suited for the picture, I'm a fan of that. So whether it's my music or someone else's music or a collaboration of, of the two, that's that's what I think, you know, should be done. And so, um, so I have a a licensing company that I just started that, you know, we've been doing some stuff on together and um, it's got a, a lot of different tracks and all different genres. There's a bunch of different songwriters and composers in there. And so I put that collection together because it's music that I really like. So when I'm doing supervision or clearances, that's stuff that I want to recommend, you know, because I know that, you know, the artists are going to be good and it's music that people right. are going to enjoy. So it's interesting, Alvin really got my attention was sort of work one film we worked on the, the composer director wasn't sure what he wanted and so basically his album ended up scoring the film like almost three times <laughs> from start to finish so it's like after that you get the medal of McHugh where you right. say yeah I'll, anytime I need somebody I'll call you because you know if you can you deal with people and it's a different language you know directors speak one language and musicians speak another right. and talk about that interaction for a second and how that works of trying to communicate with people who don't speak the language of music. Right. Well, I mean, writing music for picture is a very specific thing as opposed to writing it for, you know, stage or uh, dance or anything like that. You have to speak the language of film. And that's first and foremost, and then translate that into what does it mean musically. So it comes down to story and character for me. 
and, uh, and those are the primary focus. So when the director talks about their picture, they're talking about who's involved, how it feels, and then I have to figure out, okay, what does that mean in terms of instruments and tempo, and where does the cue start and stop, you know, that kind of thing. And, you know, uh, also there's the, when you work on independent films, like we worked on this one film, you mentioned Double Time, yeah. which Discovery had done and never ended up releasing, and now finally it's coming out. It's four years later? Is it five years later? I think it's four years. Four yeah. years wow. later. So is that tough to, you know, you put all your heart and soul into something, to, and then all of a sudden it's like disappears? And Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, you, you devote months, sometimes, you know, a year of work into something, and you're, you know, putting a lot of into it, not just time-wise, but actually, you know, your energy and yourself, and you're putting yourself in the music, and you want it to get out there in the world. So it can be disappointing if it doesn't, you know, actually reach a wider audience beyond sure. festivals, let's say. Um, but when it actually does get out there, that's super exciting. People are going to see it. They're going to enjoy the film, enjoy the product. And, and do you still play live? Do you still much do live Oh, work? yeah, yeah. No, what, I play what a kind lot. of stuff do you do instantly? Talk um, about what, some of the stuff you do in New York. Well, I play, I play with... Um, bands occasionally, um, occasionally with other orchestras, um, and a lot of um, what I've been focusing on in terms of my own music is actually doing uh, multimedia performances. So I'm doing Explain music, um, it's music with visuals, and then it's interactive, so the audience can sometimes change how it sounds or wow. what's on the screen and how it looks. And uh, it's a very participatory way of doing a performance. So I'm interested in the integration of media and how that. Internet media? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> but I like the plug. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Okay, Brittany, do we have any questions? Yeah, we do. Um, yeah. Have you, Jonathan, have you ever watched a movie um, and the score kind of ruined it for you? Like it didn't match at all or you just didn't like it? Took you yeah. out of the game? Yeah, there's definitely been you scores tell us like what that. It is? Uh, come on. Uh, no, I don't want to. I don't want to bad mouth. But there's actually been a lot of scores where it's been the opposite and it's been really inspiring. Um, I would say my comfort zone is more in the dark comedy <laughs> and drama kind of areas. Uh, it just comes naturally for some reason. Um, and animation is, you know, tends to be big and bombastic, and I'm sort of a more low-key kind you're of sure. person. You're more yeah. cerebral, yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's a little bit cerebral. Ooh, so, so I think, Ooh, yeah. it's a $5 word. You can find that in the Internet Dictionary on Webster's. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out for that. So if you if you do play live and you know these Mind the Gap kids, why don't you play a little song for them? That sounds great. Let's do All right, that. All right, cool. Okay, um, but first we're going to go and we're going to check out what um, your, your man My wiener? <laughs> I can't Eric say it. Eric Wiener. Uh, <laughs> this hipster kid out of New York keeps finding the great music. And, um, and this is actually a band that Daniel Glass lined, who is Daniel a, a Glass. good friend of ours, who has a, a great label called Glass Note. And and who's on Glass Note? Mumford & Sons. Come on. Oh, there's a ton of artists. Temper Trap? Temper Trap, uh, Secondhand Serenade. The guy's got hits. Justin uh, Nozuka. Yeah, he's got hits. Daniel so Glass, And so our, our correspondent from New York City. What's up, Brooklyn? Is uh, going to tell us a little bit about a great band called The Givers. Here you go. again here in New York City, according to you from Karen Park in Brooklyn. I'm here to tell you about a band called Givers. They're a five-piece band out of Louisiana. Released their debut album, In Light, just a couple months ago. This year, down at South by Southwest Music Festival in Austin, Texas, they turned a lot of heads. They played about 10 times, and when I got to see them at least, they are absolutely great. Check out a live performance from their 2010 South by Southwest Festival set. The song is called Up, Up, Up.
Make sure to check out Givers on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and, uh, and make sure to check out more videos on thewildhoneypie.com. Talk to you soon. That's my wiener. Catch him every week. And if you want more, go to the Wild Honey Pie. Um, the Givers, uh, I just heard on the radio, um, they voted that, uh, the jock voted that one of the most happy songs of the summer. So It's an amazing, I mean, they're an amazing band. Yeah, the givers, um, look for the Givers to blow up. And you heard it here first on the Weekly Comet. So uh, speaking of bands, well, we, we um, talk about bands a lot, right? Yes, we talk about bands a lot. And um, there are always a lot of bands on the road. And uh, so we're going to make sure that each week we really talk about that. And one of the first <clears> things that uh, we want to talk about is a great show that's coming to L.A. Uh, called L.A. Rising. It's going to be here um, July 30th. And it is um, curated by um, phenomenal musician, activist Tom Morello, also the founding member of Rage Against the Machine. And I'm actually going to... One gonna... of my favorite all-time bands. Well, I know. Some of the greatest energy of all time in my life has been at Rage Against the Machine shows. I have some stories about Rage Against yep. Machine shows that I'm, I'm not going to talk about. But I'm actually going to let uh, Tom tell you about the show in his very own words. So let's hear from him. This is Tom Morello. I'm the guitar player for a band called Rage Against the Machine. I've been asked to speak with you for a moment about uh, the LA Rising Festival and my thoughts on it. We've got some great friends on the bill with us, uh, Muse. If you, if you haven't seen Muse, you need to check that shit out, because like, Muse, is, Muse is no joke in a stadium. Uh, Rise Against, uh, Chicago, Chicago men, proud Chicago men, uh, and a great band uh, with a great philosophical bent. Ms. Lauren Hill, who I had the opportunity to see a few times on last year's uh, Rock the Bells tour, who is uh, really spectacular, and a uh, mortal technique, who's become a friend. And then El Gran Silencio, gonna bring some rock and Espanol flavor for July 30th, LA Rising. I'm Tom Morello. Look forward to seeing you there. Or if, you're, if you can't get there, then your friends are gonna tell you about it. You're gonna be like, oh, I blew it. Anyway, uh, I'm looking forward to being there, doing a lot of push-ups, doing a lot of, you know, technical exercise on the guitar so I can shred ferociously for you. Wow. Woo. Yeah, it's going to be an incredible show. I have not seen Muse yet, so I'm really excited Muse about, is unbelievable. About, about seeing them in that movie. Great live band. You know, since we do love music and love live music, we want to give away some tickets, Woo, uh, some tickets. tonight. So if anyone in the chat room um, is in the Los Angeles area, Owl City is coming to um, L.A. on July 21st. They're playing Club Nokia. Um, they'll also be in Pomona on July 23rd at the Fox Theater. Um, enter to win. Uh, just go to thecomet.com. It's super easy. All you got to do is Twitter and Facebook. Um, but Owl City is, is pretty phenomenal live. So um, if anyone out there is in the L.A. area, um, please go on and try to win some tickets. Nice. And uh, a couple other big shows recently, uh, the last couple weeks, uh, uh, Dave Matthews uh, took what, what he called D DMB car um, Carnival, um, Caravan, my bad. And uh, <laughs> he did shows in Atlantic Carmel City. Caravan. He did a show in Chicago. I think it was six shows overall over two weeks and curated with he, what he, the bands he wanted out on the road. Um, and they basically, you know, did hundreds of thousands of people out there on the road. Um, and we have a uh, picture up from uh, Jeff Kravitz, who um, is a celebrity photographer friend of mine. There we go. And uh, Jeff has a, uh, a site called InsideCelebPics.com, where you can see all his hot shots. And we're going to try to put uh, a shot of his up every week. And that's Dave Matthews having a lot of friggin' fun right that's there. That's a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, I wish I was there. And uh, speaking of wish I was there, if anybody wants to join me Saturday night, uh, Greensboro, North Carolina, I'll be there seeing Rihanna. Oh. <laughs> Rihanna, Rihanna has one of the hottest tours of the summer. If you guys haven't seen her, we talked about CeeLo bailing on that tour. Yes, that's I right. I went, and we didn't need CeeLo because Rihanna just burned the shit down. She also um, just became the most liked person on Facebook. She She's actually number beat out one. Female. She beat out Lady Gaga. Female, not just person, but female. female. But she beat out Lady Gaga. Because there's men and there's women. I understand so. that. Just saying. I'm yeah. just saying. 
Um, so yeah, she beat out Gaga and uh, is now the number one uh, Facebook girl. Yeah, she's killing it. Um, but I think hey, uh, it's uh, time. Well, hold on. Brittany, does anybody have anything to say about touring? Any bands they've seen out there that they love on the road that they can recommend to us? <laughs> and that we should look out for to be on this uh, this weekly music show called the Weekly Comet. Um, they're talking about Owl City, Floggy Molly. They want tickets. I mean, if you've got tickets, I'm sure they want them. Yeah, Brittany, <laughs> that's what we just said. <laughs> oh, you got it. That's got the sting. <laughs> um, well, that's cool. So, um, yeah, yeah. So I think um, we have uh, yet uh, a special guest. Our fabulous guest is going to join my. Oh, the that gap. guy who was sitting here is now going to play some music with this. I, that's this what gap I people. heard. That's nice. So, ladies and gentlemen, once again. Another Thursday night with us. Mm -hmm. um, for everyone out there, please hang out for the post show. Um, John and I are going to go over and talk to the band for a little bit. But for right now, this is it. We are signing off, and we will see you here. Hasta la vista, next baby. Next week. Good night. See ya.